What were your first thoughts when you heard Jair had signed? Oh, uh, I think it's, it's a great deal for the organization. You know, um, you got a young man who did a great job for us a couple of years ago, and then, you know, got injured last year. And, uh, you know, I think it shows us that the organization cares about what he's done, and they expect for him to do the same thing he did a couple of years ago. Jerry, you, you have Rasul obviously played well last year. There's no suit, you know, played pretty well. And then Jair was out for a lot of time. Having all three of those guys together, assuming that everybody stays healthy, what, what does that do for you in terms of the lineup and flexibility and all that? Well, number one, it gives us uh, depth. You know, uh, you can't have too many corners in this league, I'm telling you. Uh, these guys are really good on offense, and you got to be able to match those guys sometimes, some way. And right now, that adds a lot of depth. You've got some veteran guys in the room. Stokes was a rookie last year. Now he understands how to play. He got about maybe 800 snaps under his belt, which most rookies don't get on good teams. So I, I think that's going to help Stokes, uh, you know, take, a, take another step up. And so, you know, when you have guys like that and then you add in uh, Nixon, you add in a couple of other veteran guys, that, that not only brings veterans to the room, it brings competition to the room. So no one can really relax. And I, I'm big on that. I'm big on guys competing at a high level. It doesn't matter where you paid, where you at. I want you competing at a high level. And I think our guys understand that. We did that a couple, about three years ago. When, we, when I first came in, I'm talking about competition. And if you compete at a high level in practice, you'll play at a high level in the game. You don't know much about Nixon. What can you tell us about him? Well, you know, I, I watched him, uh, watched this uh, tape that he played in uh, Las Vegas last year. And I uh, played really, really well inside. You know, quick guy, does a lot of stuff on, on there, playing the slot position for him last year. And great on special teams. So to me, I think, you know, that'll be good for us to see, hey, look, if you're a backup on this team, you're playing great special teams, you know, and that's, that's anyone. Whoever's a backup, you better be ready to play great on special teams. And I think that's the thing, the attitude that we got to have. If you're competing, you're going to be competing for a, play, a chance to play on the team. But guess what? Special teams better be number one. Stokes and Douglas, if they had to go line up inside and play the slot tomorrow, how, how much of a challenge would that be for them? Not at all. Just like you got that cat. Just like what? I'll just tell them you got that guy right there in front of you. That's how easy it is. So that, they, they got the because you know it's a different position than the perimeter, right? So they've got the, the natural skill set to to be able to line up inside. Yeah, to me, I think all our guys do. I think you know from Stokes to Jair to I mean Jai played a little bit last year. Uh, he played the year the year before. Um, you know, Rasul Douglas the same way. We got guys who can play more than one position. And I think that's only going to help you because if you got a guy that only can play one position and all of a sudden you lose that position inside and you lose a position outside, but coach, I can't play outside. Well, that's bad for us because now you lose one of your good players and you can't put another good player in the position. So you got two good players and one can't play the, the corner per se. So to me, I cross train guys all the time. You know, we're just putting guys here, there. Again, that, that'll start showing up next week. But in the classroom, the last four weeks, we've just been talking about, hey, who's going to be here, who's going to be there, and guys learn more than one position. That's kind of what we'll be doing right now. So, so do you anticipate that both those guys will, will get plenty of rotation inside and won't just be Jair? Because, I mean, on paper, he seems to be the guy that – No, no, I, I wouldn't be worrying about the paper. Trust me. I think it'll be Jair. I think it'll be Stokes. I think it'll be Rasul. It could be Savage. We got a lot of guys. I mean, again, we got a lot of good guys that can play in the slot. That's, that's the best part that we have here. We don't have just one guy. Our guys are, hey, coach, I want to go play in there. You know why I come? There's a lot of action at the nickel, and everybody wants to be in the action. They want to compete. So I want guys that want to compete and want to go play. Hey, Jerry, I know it's been a minute now since Rasul resigned, but what did that mean to be able to keep him? What was your reaction to that? And then also being able to have him for a full offseason now as opposed to kind of hitting the ground running like he did last year. Just what do you think that does for him in the long run? Well, number one, I think it helps us again with um, depth on our team. We, we have a good football player that, that we don't have to wait on to come, like you said, in the middle of the season. And then to get him to see, to see him during the offseason, now we get a chance to see what he did working-wise when he wasn't here. And, and to me, I'm big on if guys don't show up, you know what, I got trust in you. Because somewhere along the line, you did something. It just wasn't luck last year. It doesn't happen to be luck. You can't get that lucky every time. So you have to put work in before you get here. So when the curtain opens up, you're ready to go play. 
A lot of times they don't know what Rasul Douglas did. I don't know what Rasul Douglas did, but I tell you what, he must have worked his tail off because when he got here, he wasn't out of shape. He's ready to go play, and he made the plays he needed to make. Hey, Jerry, what about, on the, what about on the flip side of that, though? Like, obviously, he had bounced around quite a bit, and, and I think you were a sixth team in two years. Mm -hmm. what, how does that happen to a guy that then is as good as he was for you, and how do you make sure that it's not just catching lightning in a bottle and he's able to sustain what he did for you last year? Well, to me, uh, I, I think the good thing that happened, I got a chance, we got a chance, it was bad for us that we coached the Pro Bowl, nothing against it, but that means we wasn't playing the next week. But uh, I got a chance to talk with Darius Slay, and he was over there with him. So he kind of gave me some insight on why he wasn't there, and you guys won't get that. But, you know, it, 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 it helped me understand why he did such a good job over here. And my job is to put you in a position where you can make your plays. I, 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 hey, look, I'm not a cookie-cutter coach, so whatever you're good at, I'm going to let you be good at. And that's kind of what he did over here. But from now to before the draft, I mean, how differently do you feel about this defense as a whole in the direction you're headed? Well, I mean, to me, I think if you look at us, I think like right at – Right before the draft, you've seen guys leave. There's guys that – they're good football players. You know, the thing about the NFL, there's free agency. If you can't sign all the good players, trust me, you can't. I wish we could keep all our players, but we can't. And then I thought Goody and them did a great job with the draft of bringing those guys over. You know, we got a host of young guys. I, I think young defensive tackle is going to be pretty good. You know, you look at uh, the linebackers, I think it's going to be pretty good. So I'm talking about the guys that got drafted in the first round. Then we put some more big guys up on the D-line. You look at we got a couple of guys in the secondary. And now we fill our holes in, and that's said, hey, coaches, here's some young guys. See what you can do with them, but it's time to go play. And then once we go through our practice, we start going through the OTAs, and we find out who these guys are. That's only going to make us better because now we still got most of our starters back. But we need those backup guys to say, hey, look, you got to be pushing these guys to heels, and that's how, we, that's how we're going to become good. You know, we can't let our starters get comfortable, and there's nobody behind them. To me, I'm more of the competition. Bring more good players on, and we'll play a lot better on Sunday. Joe was talking yesterday about how the moment last year that that really kind of gelled for you guys. Was the game that Joe was out, and you guys kind of had to step in as a group, and it kind of looked pretty seamless? What was that moment for you guys last year where, okay, this system is gelling for all of us? Well, I mean, to me, I think, uh, you know, with, uh, I, I, I was new two years ago, so it was new for me. So I got a chance to meet, see, uh, be around Joe, and I knew KO. I, I, I knew, I didn't know Mike, and I didn't know RD. So I got a chance to be the odd man out. So now once I got used to what those guys was doing, that kind of gave me like, okay, Jay Moore is good at this. Mike's good at this. So I kind of take a survey of what guys are good at. And then, you know what, I just stand back. So when we got a chance to coach in the Arizona game, we basically just coached as a group. You know, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm thinking about calling. And then you make sure your guys can do these things. And to me, it's easy. Once you know who your coaches are and what they can do, you let them guys be good at that. And then you just be good at your job. Joe was talking yesterday about how much work Jair put in to just get back to play a handful of snaps in the playoffs and how maybe not every guy would, would do what he went through to do that. What did you see from, from his behind-the-scenes work just to get back for that one game? Well, I mean, a lot of time guys don't understand, like, when you hurt something and you've never been hurt, now that's, that's mental, okay? You have to go through the mental gymnastics of getting back, okay, physically, they're going to take care of it in the training room. They're going to take care of that in the weight room. But the mental part is what you that's – the, that's the hurdle that every player has to go through that's hurt because now he don't want to get hurt again. So is he going to give you 100% when he gets on the football field? Is he going to be timid? What type of guy are you going to get? And I think the playoff game gave us a sense that, you know what, he'll be back and he'll be ready to go because he wasn't trying to protect himself. He was not there. And that's the hardest part that football players go through when they hurt. And then they come back the same season. Now, what am I doing? Are, are they going to, you know, are they going to throw the ball at me? They're going to run at me. What am I going to do? When you get past the mental part, you'll, you'll go back to being who you are. What do you know about Rico Gafford? And what is the process like for you getting him ready? This guy who's played some corner, then the receiver down back to corner. Well, it, to me, I think it's more like I can kind of relate to it when I was in high school. I played quarterback. And then when I went to Texas, they made me play safety. 
So what I do is I'm taking him the same way I would take myself and say, hey, you know how to play offense, all right? I can't teach you anything about the offense. You know how to run a route, you know how to do that. Now, what I want you to do is flip it in your mind and say, I'm a defensive guy. So if the guy lines up outside the numbers, what route do you think he's going to run? Oh, coach, he's going to run this. Well, cover that route. Oh, coach, he's going to run this. Well, cover that route. So now he knows what the offense is going to do. He's way ahead of most DBs I ever get because they don't know anything about the offense and they just now learning defense. He knows the offense. I got to teach him the defense and he'll be a good football player.